Okay, so real quick, I want to do one last video on assembly. This is going to be going over pointers. It's kind of a follow-up to our previous video. We went over some more advanced procedures. This is going to be kind of taking the idea of pointers that you might have seen in high level. Since everything in assembly is done directly on memory, I generally think that assembly-based pointers are a lot easier to understand because you actually see what's happening as opposed to more of the abstraction that compilers and interpreters handle for you. So, let's go and take a look at that right quick. Okay, so just assembly pointers. Since everything in memory is essentially a stack of addresses, we can very easily utilize the notion of pointers to dynamically adjust memory. We store memory locations in our address register to achieve this functionality. So, main thing, address register, the A register. This is gonna be the most key element to dealing with pointers. We take a look here, we have an example, set the register address in DR to negative one, input is R0, which holds address. It sets RAM R0 to negative one. So we have three instructions here. We have at R0, let's just go ahead and take a look at A, D, and M. And we are going to go to zero. We don't know what date register is, but we have the M register. So whatever our current memory is set to. Well, if we look over here in RAM, address zero has 1013 in it. The 1013, okay. Now we have A equals M. So this is just going to give us 1013 which currently we don't know what that is, but we're gonna set it to negative one. Now all of a sudden in RAM, address register 1013 is negative one. So again, this key instruction here, in the hack machine language, pointer-based processing is realized by setting the address register to the address that we want to access in instruction A equals, and in this case we're doing M, because it's whatever we want from our current address. So if I wanted to adjust 1016, I would change this 1013 to 1016. All of a sudden now I write negative one to this, and that's all I have to do. So we just change what's over in R0, because that's what we're using here, to whatever memory address we want, and dynamically we can adjust the pointer to point to something new in our stack of addresses. All right, so another one. Since RAM R0 to R1, so now we have two different memory addresses being used. So we're going to do at R1, I'm just gonna do ADM again real quick. So at R1 gives us one data register we don't know. Memory register will be set to one, which is the RAM zero to R1, looks like negative 17, this is already set. So negative 17 in our memory register. We're gonna do D equals M, store this value because we want to move it to somewhere else. We're gonna do at R0, which is 1015. We're gonna do A equals M, this is the pointer notation. All of a sudden now A equals 1015. We don't know what this is. We're gonna do M equals D, setting the negative 17 into memory. All of a sudden, the desired result here is negative 17 and 1015. So again, we take a value, store the data register, use our pointer, relocate here, and store that data in memory. It's not too bad. One more example, set R1 equal to whatever RAM R0 is. So currently we want to get whatever this value is, go to that location in memory, grab that data, and store it in R1. The first thing, ADM, as usual, at R0. Zero, no idea, and currently 1013. Okay, A equals M, we're going straight to the pointer, which gives us this. So again, we have 1013. Uh, is a 75 equals m we're going to store that value at r1 
and we don't know what this is technically. Then M equals D, storing this into there, giving us 75 and register one. Now real quick, you might notice there's a bunch of data here. We have 1012 through 116. If I wanted to write 256 to R1 instead, I would just change this 1013 to 1016. And then I'd go here, grab this data, and then move that here, now being 256. So this gives us more of a dynamic approach. Just by changing this one value here, we can alter what we eventually store. So this is going to be kind of a setup problem here. So Set the first n entries of the memory block beginning an address base to negative 1. The R0 is the actual base, R1 n the actual number of entries. And we just want to write negative 1 to those entries. You can see our base is 300, so we're going to start at address 300. And then we have 5 entries, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, up to 3 or 4. So key operation here. Is RAM R0 plus I equals negative 1. So this is going to be kind of a setup block to the next slide. So, just like our previous slides and sleep previous video, we're going to be looking at a procedure. This one is going to be a loop that actually writes negative 1 to all of these based on our parameters in R0 and R1. Again, 300 being our pointer here, so it's going to start there. This is kind of like the idea of an array. We have a pointer from the very start, and you start writing it as individual indexes beyond. So, first line, we have i equals 0, so we have at i, m equals 0. We have some initiated value, register i, or not register i, register 16, which is variable i. And then we have a loop. Let's create a new label to reset our loop. And then we have an if statement of if i equals equals r1 go to end. So this is doing comparison if we have related to the number of entries. So we start i equals zero, and we're going to you notice here count this up. So we need zero, then one, then two, three, four, so on, and so forth. We're counting those up. So in that subtracting it which would give us r1 so we're doing d minus m which can be 5 minus 0 then 5 minus 1 2 this is i here so this is r1 for the 5 this is i for the 0 1 2 so eventually we're going to zero out because we're doing jeq and that's when we'll jump to end then we do the key actual instruction set so we have ram r0 plus i equals negative one this is very similar to what we just did the only difference is we're adding a incremental value to it so normally it would just be storing negative one and 300 because we have at r0 equals m Real quick i also have i here as well so a is going to equal zero we know it's 300 we have D with M, that should be 300. At I, which currently equals zero. A equals D plus M. So this is gonna be A equals this, so it's 300 plus zero is going to be 300. And do M equals negative one. So you write negative one to address 300. All of a sudden, we're gonna to continue to loop this. Except for one thing to be different is this is gonna change to one based on the next slide of I equals I plus one. But eventually we're going to be running it 301 then 302 then 303 so on and so forth so that's going to be this part right here so you can tell that i is being incremented if we do that again i right, know that we had 300 300 negative one throw that negative one there then we have i which was zero but now we increment it so it's one go through our comparisons it's not zero we now have r0 plus i, which we know r0 is 300, plus i gives us 
R0 D equals M. A equals D plus M. So D is always going to be 300 in this case. This is going to be 301. All right, negative 1 to 301. This becomes 2. A becomes 302. Write that here. Same thing with 303, 304. And then we would jump out because this would end up zeroing out. So we don't continue past that. So we have loop to jump just to reset it. We have our label of end and then our infinite loop here. So again, this is kind of the idea how to do with pointers. We can have ideas of arrays, and different things like that. So we have parameters that the first last part of it, the first part was the base of it. So this is the starting point of our address. Then we have the number of entries in that array or that stack of addresses that we wanted to use. We can also use it like an idea of say, okay, I have some block of memory at, I don't know, memory register 500. There are 30 registers in this block. I want to set the 12th register. So we use the base of 500, add 12 to it, grab that data and do whatever we want with it. And that's the idea of array indexing. So we can store data in that memory block and we can get data from that memory block. And that's the general idea. Now, with assembly, we have complete access to all memory. So we know the exact register, the location of it, and how to interface with it, and other registers as well. So this is generally why I think that pointers in assembly is a lot more straightforward than pointers in say like Python, C++, even Java, C Sharp, languages like that. Because a lot of the compilers or the interpreters do all the work for us. We don't see what's happening in the background, in memory, unless you're directly looking at it. But with assembly, you have to know. Generally, unless you're doing like high level macro assembly and stuff like that, which we'll get to eventually, but with very, very basic stuff like this, you have to know every address, every single memory location to interface with any of this. So that's why I think pointers and assembly generally make more sense, at least to me. But overall, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video.